Well, hello, good people. I'm Dmitry, and I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what EMI interference inside your machine actually sounds like? You better put on some headphones because there's some beautiful noise you're about to hear. So that EMI interference that you heard was actually recorded through the microphone inside my gaming headset. And by the way, if you're in the market for a headset, I'll leave links for the PC37X in the description below from Drop, really awesome headset, highly recommend it. Now what EMI is, is electromagnetic interference produced by your hardware, mainly by the really powerful graphics cards, which is why we're able to hear it through the recording of the microphone. And so I started to wonder, how does EMI on different machines affect this particular microphone, the PC37X, which is one of my favorite gaming headsets of all time with a really beautiful natural sound microphone that is also quite sensitive so we can hear what's happening inside the machine so you can actually hear the difference. And also if you're interested in the comparison of actual audio quality from different devices, so motherboards and expansive amplifiers, we've done that video too, links below. Now the idea to do this experiment really evolved through me testing multiple gaming headsets throughout the years on different machines and actually really realizing that the microphone quality, not particularly of this one, but through testing, is slightly different from one system to another system. And so in this video, let's test out how this microphone sounds, the PC37X, wonderful natural sound, based on different sources, my Threadripper machine, my external USB sound card, my Corsair 1, and my Razer Blade 17. I will provide some guidelines on how to improve audio quality in this video as well, so in case you're not interested in hearing the noise, you'll be able to pick up some tips on how to make that noise disappear and also make your microphone sound much better. All right, let's begin right after this. What does it take to experience a compact, high-performance gaming notebook? You want specs that can meet the most demanding tasks like a fast CPU, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, ultra-fast NVMe SSD, and RTX graphics. You also want something that's lightweight and easy to carry around. How about a robust optical mechanical keyboard with per-key RGB lighting and a fast 144Hz IPS display? This is a new XPG Xenia gaming notebook. Check it out at the links below and game to the extreme. All right, so the first thing I wanted to establish a noise floor so you can hear the difference between all these machines by muting the microphone and boosting the gain to maximum so we can hear what the noise floor sounds like without any variables introduced. And of course, this noise profile or the background hiss comes from different hardware components within whatever audio configuration. So my Threadripper machine and the Corsair one both have the same Kodak from Realtek, but obviously different motherboards and Asus actually has separate shielding on their audio components uh, to remove any potential interference, or so they say. And this shielding usually involves actually separated PCB components from the main motherboard area so that it limits the overall EMI interference. The Sound Blaster X3 is a USB external sound card, so none of the EMI interference that normally happens around the motherboard is actually affecting this unit. And the Razer Blade 17 is probably the most challenging to make it sound clean just because all the components are crammed in such a tiny shaft shielding that would be quite difficult. The most interesting thing to observe here is just how the noise floor changes based on system load. Like when the GPU is the 100%, that is when EMI kicks in and you can hear that through the microphone. So let's take a listen.
I hope that wasn't too much noise for you, but it's kind of clear that the Sound Blaster X3, the external USB sound card was the cleanest and that's a given. It's far away from all the EMI emitting hardware and the only sort of background hiss or noise is produced by the USB bus or its own internal power supply. But there are a few surprises here. So number one, the Corsair one and the Threadripper machine both have the same codec, different motherboards, but just how much quieter the Corsair one machine was. Even though they're both running a 2080 Ti, which is supposed to spew out so much EMI. Surprise number two, there was a slight increase on that interference when the GPU load was at 100% on all scenarios except for the Sound Blaster. And surprise number three, just how dirty and noisy the microphone signal was on the Razer Blade 17, which is probably why you would want to invest in an, into an external DAC amp combo. Now, the second part of my testing includes actually hearing what the microphone sounds like through a vocal projection to see if there's any noticeable difference between these machines. And I wanted to start this test at zero dBA boost just to hear what the preamps are doing in order to amplify that vocal signal. Let's begin with my Threadrip machine, the Asus Zenith Extreme Alpha. This is at zero dBA boost, and this has the loudest vocal pickup out of anything, so you don't necessarily need to boost it to get good cl uh, clarity on the vocals. But if I do add 10 dBA, so right now my speech is much louder, without introducing too much of that background hiss with the added 10 dB. Moving on to the Sound Blaster X3, by default it sounds a little bit too low on the volume but it does give me a bit more natural vocal character versus my ASUS motherboard and if I boost the microphone through command center and lower the microphone gain, this is my desired device for voice recordings. So right now the microphone is boosted with a slightly lower gain that gives us that middle ground of it not being too harsh and not too quiet without uh, raising the noise floor and given the noise floor is already very quiet, um, yeah, you probably don't hear anything in the background aside from my AC running. Moving on to the Corsair one, you can immediately hear that it is pretty quiet, which is why it actually got such a good result in my noise profile test in the beginning, because the preamps on here are not as powerful as what I get with my Asus motherboard. So I have to boost the signal 20 dBA inside the Realtek software so you can have a proper vocal projection. In doing so, we raise the noise floor, and also there's a bit of compression happening with my voice that I wasn't hearing with the Sound Blaster X3 nor the Asus motherboard, but let me know if you can hear that through YouTube. And finally, the outlier, the Razer Blade 17. This one, just as with all other machines, is pretty quiet on the preamps, therefore we have to boost the signal in order to get a audible vocal speech. So boosting the signal here is absolutely necessary, but it does introduce a lot more hiss and background noise versus all other machines. So, after having listened to all the clips you just heard, I kind of came to a conclusion that this whole noise in the background and hiss really doesn't matter. Even with the Razer Blade 17 that has the noisiest microphone signal, if you have literally anything playing in the background, a game, slight music track, or like your ambient noise that is slightly louder, you won't necessarily be able to hear the microphone hiss or the noise. And really the main significant difference between all these machines would be the sensitivity of the initial preamplification of the microphone without adding any gain. So with my ASUS motherboard, it has the best volume pickup without needing to boost anything, while all the machines here were kind of quiet and required some sort of amplification. But even still boosting the signal, especially in any gaming scenario, will not matter whatsoever. But I also recently discovered this free application to improve microphone quality let me tell you about that. And with the software, first of all, you have more precise sensitivity adjustment, which is great. And with a simple slider, you can add a little bass to the sound, which most gaming microphones lack. This is what the PC37X microphone sounds like with voice meter banana running in the background sounds pretty good. And the really important function here is called noise gate, uh, which is much better than your traditional noise cancellation through Realtek drivers or your motherboard drivers. And what noise gate does is it limits the threshold at which volume the microphone starts to be picked up. So by playing around with a little adjustment, you can see when the microphone gets cut off. So depending on your volume of speech and you can make it sound really good while it's trying to isolate everything that isn't at that certain volume level. This, of course, is also advantageous for streamers who use a headset microphone that generally doesn't sound very smooth or pleasant. And I'm really happy I found out about this program because it makes the PC37X sound so much better. And so the takeaway from this entire noise experiment is that it's not as important 
as I thought there would be. Even in the gaming scenario, when people are hearing you speak and there is background hiss coming from your side of things, it will most likely be completely muted out by the gaming sound and whatever other sound there is. But if background hiss and noise is a problem in your communications, make sure to download this voice meter banana app. It's free, play around with the noise gate and add a little EQ in there so you add some bass to make it sound more full and uh, yeah, eliminate some of that noise. All right, I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what your experience been like in terms of background hiss with microphones on multiple systems. Yeah, I'm Dimitri, thanks so much for watching. Check out this other Realm content, subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.